Here's the teaching a lot of pastors do not like. Years back, I was teaching a course for ministry leaders. For this class, I was teaching on one of my favorite chapters of the Bible, John 6, when Jesus feeds the multitude. Now, that story is important because other than the resurrection, it's the only miracle that appears in all four Gospels. So maybe we need to pay attention. In John 6, thousands of folks are following Jesus around due to the signs that he's doing. And Jesus realizes these people are hungry. So Jesus takes five loaves, two fish, and uses them to feed everyone. Huge miracle. But here's the part that often gets left out. When this miracle happens, and because of what they are getting, the people want to make Jesus king by force. And Jesus is like, nope, not like this. And then he does his Houdini thing and melts through the crowd. Later that night, Jesus walks for three, four miles on water, catches up to the disciples in their boat. And they're like, really, Jesus? And then the boat just shows up on shore. I love John 6. Next day, the multitude of people wake up and go, hey, where's Jesus? We hungry again. So they actually track him down across the sea and ask for more miracles. And Jesus says, look here, peeps, I know the real reason you're looking for me is because you ate my wonder bread, but you're looking for the wrong kind of food. The food I actually have to give gives eternal life. They're like, well, okay, how do we get that? Jesus says, just believe in the one God sent. Okay, go do something then. God gave our fathers manna when they were running around in the desert. What are you going to do for us? Jesus had literally just fed everybody the day before, as well as other miracles, which is the whole reason over 5,000 people showed up to begin with. They just kept asking for more and more and more. Take, 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 me, me, me. So Jesus says, okay, you want to play it this way then? Your ancestors had manna, but you're getting the true bread of life. You want that? Well, of course we do. We are hungry. Give me, give me. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And people start to complain. What do you think you're saying? You're the bread of life. We'll just take our bread, please. Feed us. And Jesus comes back with, I am the living bread. Basically, you have to consume me because I'm better than wonder bread. To live eternal, you have to eat my flesh, drink my blood, consume me. Basically, you have to bring me into union with you. Now, these were dietary conscious Jews. Jesus knew his audience would be crazy offended. He knew that only the truly devoted would stick around after him saying that. He's literally running people off that don't want him. He wasn't after crowds of people. He wasn't after fame, fortune, popularity, and wealth. He was after those who wanted to be united with him. Getting it yet? And you know what happened? All the peeps that wanted to make him king the day before because he was filling their bellies, they left. The people, the leaders, and all of his disciples other than the original 12 took off. And even Jesus looked at the 12 and was like, well, what are you gonna do? And Peter said, Jesus, we don't understand a thing you just said, but you know what? Where are we going to go? Your words are life. You're the son of God. Now, some lessons here. You have people who are trying to force and honor Jesus as king because of what they get. Then you have people seeking him because of what they get, not because of who he is. But the minute they didn't get what they want, gone. It's not about attracting large crowds and seeking popularity. It's about intimacy with the king and feeding from him. That's a transformed life. And as leaders, Jesus is our example that we should be following, right? So is it about attracting massive crowds with light shows based on consumption and huge events? Or is it about seeking out the ones who are really desiring intimacy with God? And as I'm teaching my class, I'm watching this message hitting home. I'm seeing people becoming aware, like scales falling from their eyes. And just then, a pastor in attendance pipes up from the back. Well, that was Jesus' ministry. I'm trying to build my ministry. And I was about to retort, but I could see in the looks of everyone present, I didn't need to. They'd received the teaching loud and clear. And after the pastor said what he said out loud, he kind of ducked his head because he heard the heart of his own words. But don't judge it. It's a mistake many of us, myself included, have made. Building our ministry is how leaders have been trained to think. See, it's not about my ministry. Or your ministry. Last I checked, Jesus wasn't as concerned with his ministry as much as he was with his father's. Because Jesus only did what he saw the father do. Maybe if leaders poured time and effort into seeking out the father's heart, instead of trying to build something for him to bless, we could step into a blessing greater than we've ever imagined. Maybe we should be leaning intimately into Jesus so that we can release 
his ministry, the love of God in all of its form, destroying our false systems of belief, hurt, pain, and separation. We don't chase Jesus town to town because of what we get. We don't go to conference to conference because of what we get. All we have to do is receive what he gives us freely, the bread of life. Are you chasing Jesus for wonder bread or are you dining on who he actually is? Is it about you or is it about him? Are you a lover or are you a prostitute? I think I did a video on that already. Comments, complaints, ideas? Love them, love to read them. Click the pin videos for more.